Hi guys, welcome to Code Solutions with Khumatsagam Peculiar, where we learn how to code through working out solutions to code problems. So for our session today, we'll be working on a file, file handling problem. For this video, we will be reading data from a file. So what we're going to be doing is writing a code, which will be doing so, reading content from a file. An example would be, suppose you have a very large file with maybe student grades or employee information contacts and you want to read through this doc document file and use this data for something like, say, maybe calculating the student average or employee salary and the like. And for our problem today, we'll be working on a problem where we'll be reading student information from a file. I've already created such a file containing student names, their names and their surnames, and their grades also. Say maybe the test one, an assignment, and a quiz. So that's the content of my TXT file. And this data is separated by spaces, one space in between. We will create a code where we will need to calculate the average for each of the students. Simple enough, right? Okay, so let us get coding. Our headers. Because we are reading the student names and the surnames, they have data types string. So we'll need to include the header containing the lab libraries to enable for reading st string variables. Also, we're working on a file, and in order for the compiler to use the file handling functions, we will declare the header f stream. This is because an executing problem is unable to interact with the file because the execution file resides in the main memory and the file resides on another memory device, such as the hard disk. The executing program can only indirectly interact with the file by opening connections between the program and that file. Such connections are called fstream objects. And that's about it. Now go to our main function. Declarations first. We need a variable holder for the data we will be reading from our file. The name and the surname are string variables, so declare. And the grades we are reading, we will have them as double. We could say an integer, but let's just go for double. And we're also calculating the average, which also will be declared as a double. The file we'll be reading from also needs to be declared a variable holder. This is called creating a stream object, an F stream object. We had the file stream header declared, so now that's just the creation of the object of the stream. Those that have already dealt with classes. This may be making more sense to you when I say it's an object creation. For those that are still in the basis, just take it as it's a data type for whatever stream that we will be using for declaring. The name of the file holder, it's in a file. Now, before performing any operations in a file, you must open it. So, connect to the file on a disk with a function open. We have the file name as we stored it inside of our parenthesis. And since we know where it's located, let us get the file path on the desktop. Copy this file path. 
and paste it over here now change all the black slashes to forward slashes and there we have connected to the file there's a possibility that you could be trying to read from a non-existing file or just any type of error could hinder the opening of this file and as such we need to create such a scenario here so that the user is informed if there was an error connecting to the year file so we'll display an error message Let us save our file so that we can see this code will run through. Let's change this file name so the executing file doesn't find this file. And we have seen that the error message displays. So now let's create the code for if we successfully connected to the file and enable to read the file. Inform the user that the file connection was successful. We've successfully connected to the file, meaning we, now we can start to read from our file. Like we do using C into read user input, we do with this in file object. We will read the name, the surname, and the grades. We can only read line by line, line at a time. Now to calculate the average of the student, And we output the names and the average. Let's run to see if we really are doing things right here. There we have our file info on the console with the student's average. We can read input from a file, mission accomplished, right? But now we can just have read one line from the list. We need to read the whole file. But we can't repeat these code lines to read each and every line. Suppose that there were a thousand lines, and then we'd have to rewrite this a thousand times. That would take time, eh? So what we're going to use is a loop. Remember, loops are from the chapter repetition control structures, meaning that whenever you see a repetition, we use loops to avoid repeating code. Loops carry the first count and keeps incrementing until where you want to stop counting the repetition. We've already read the first line. We need to read until the end of the line. So our loop needs to be informed of that. 
We have a function which runs through to reading a file until the end of a file, EOF, which means end of file. Now this code line means keep repeating as long as it's not the end of file. You see the exclamation mark? Not the end of file. You will break if the condition isn't true, which is when we have reached the end of the file. And because we're just going to be reading line by line like we did for our first line, so we're just going to copy this code lines. Line we line where we read the file row and our average calculation for the student and the output also. There we have it. We created connections to the file in order to use it. Now that we are done with it, let us close the connections. And we are done. Now let's run to see if indeed we have achieved what we had hoped to. Wow, wow, this is great. Now look at the data here compared to what we have on our file. This is a replication. This is a great, right? Imagine how much time you've saved. Now go on and create that solution to read in files and create different output which you require and come share your solutions with us here. You can challenge yourself by extending this problem to sorting out this output nicely using the iomanip functions set with. Let me not give away the solution to this challenge. Let's get opening our compilers and write that code and we will meet on the next video. Ciao!